Hello and welcome to Built On Air, a podcast and video series about all things Airtable. I'm your host, Zoe Vanderplu, and I'd like to thank our sponsor, OpenSide. Visit OpenSide.com for products and services that will take your Airtable to the next level. Use promo code BUILTONAIR, one word, all caps, for a one-time $20 credit off of any purchase. This episode, we welcome Cy Rarong, a software developer at Shopify, living in Ottawa, Canada. Cy originally heard about Airtable from some of his fellow coworkers, and the app piqued his curiosity as a possible solution for one of his ongoing personal projects, creating a household expenses tracker that would satisfy his girlfriend's budgetary ambitions while keeping it simple enough for him to update reliably. Sai walks us through the tracker that he built in Airtable, which is tested and proven by the way, they're still using it years later, and a couple other bases he built to organize life, a houseplant watering tracker and a mini Goodreads database for research papers. Check out builtonair.com for more Built On Air episodes, and while you're at it, sign up for our mailing list to get weekly updates on all things Airtable. Sai, thank you so much for being here with us today on Built On Air. Um, Why don't you tell us a little bit about uh, who you are, uh, where you are, since you're another one of our international guests, and and what you do. Fancy, fancy. I'm international. I'm actually, uh, so I'm assuming you're based out of the U.S. I am uh, up in Canada, in Ottawa, uh, Ontario, uh, capital city of Canada. Uh, what am I, what do I do? I guess the short answer version of that is I'm a software developer at a company here called Shopify. Uh, and well, I have, I don't know. Yeah. I guess that's like the super short version of it. Um, and so, so tell us about, um, you were mentioning earlier, we were talking, you, you grew up in the Middle East and then you came to Canada yeah. for school. So kind of what was that whole, you know, process like? Did you know when you came to Canada for school that you wanted to, you know, be a software developer or was that something you, you a passion you discovered later? Oh, yeah. So um, I was, yeah, so, so a little bit background about me. I'm uh, ethnically Indian. I grew up in, uh, well, I was born in India. I grew up most, for the most part in, in the Middle East, in, in the city of Dubai and Abu Dhabi in equal parts. And then I, well, I don't know. I think at that point, I kind of wanted to get out of that part of the world and get to North America. Uh, education in North America, like as an international student, is expensive. So I wanted to find like something that was the most value for the buck kind of thing so that I could right. make like a nice presentation to my dad and be like, hey, dad, this is expensive, but it's going to be good. So uh, I like in insane amount of Googling around to see like what kind of uh, North American universities uh, would be good. I mean, I checked out a bunch of those in the U.S. And then I found uh, there were some universities that kind of caught my eye in, 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 in Canada. And uh, Waterloo is the one that I ended up going to. Uh, the thing about Waterloo is it's a really peculiar like programming contest that, so I, I knew I wanted to study computer science. So that's the kind of the background. And what Waterloo did really good at these like programming contests for college students. Um, and I didn't even know what these were, but I used that as a marker to decide like what university I should go to. As in like, oh, these people seem to be doing good at programming contests. I'm assuming they know what they're doing. In terms <laughs> so of- you're like, I want to go where the winners are. I'm like, yeah, I want to go where the winners are. So, uh, <laughs> And then I looked at all the winning schools and like, I looked at the American schools that were winning and man, big bucks. And then I went to the Canadian schools and I was like, this is great. I want to <laughs> do this. And so Waterloo has this really cool thing called a co-op program, which is you uh, are kind of forced to work. Almost like you're like, you study for four months and then you're like, well, I don't know if you have any marketable skills or not, but go find a job because that's part of your university credit. So I had to kind of learn how to, like I had a like it's shitty work ethic and all of that. So I had to like kind of learn enough programming to, like I, I, was, I wasn't like doing programming in, in high school or anything. So I was like right. kind of learning, uh, learning as I go, just like know enough programming to kind of get my next co-op job. And that's kind of how I bootstrapped my education and to um, uh, learning, learning computer science as well as like getting a job. Um, yeah. And so that's, uh, yeah. When in Canada, it was a, I had a blast. It was really cold. Not, it's not used to that growing up in the middle East. It's like 50 degrees Celsius. I can't do the conversion from Celsius to Fahrenheit. I'm sorry, it's but okay. it's, it's hot. And then you come to Canada and it's cold. 
like just like it's really cold it's like negative 30 degrees celsius sometimes right so um yeah i mean i well, went to university here and so like as part of my co-op jobs i ended up in the u.s a couple times uh, oh, cool. working in the bay area um and so i mean like weather is great and i was totally sold on like moving to the u.s after university but then i met a girl in university and she was very like adam like so we flew out to the bay area and we lived there for like a little while while i was doing these co-op gigs and stuff and like she was just like hey this is great and all but like i'm not leaving canada like you know overall canadian life is great so i've been here ever since like i was kind of anchored to I guess Canada in that way and I'm really happy about that choice now looking back I'm a Canadian now I've been working at this like company called Shopify it's worked out well like I joined this company four years ago and it's just grown from strength to strength and, and incidentally I also discovered Airtable kind of partly through Shopify and partly through like online stuff that I was following around while I was in the area so they kind of eventually led me down to here I guess Right. And you had mentioned that um, Shopify, which I, I guess, I mean, I would describe it as, you know, one of the leading kind of e-commerce store companies. Um, I'm not sure if they self-identify as, as something different, but... Uh, not e-commerce anymore. It's commerce. It's commerce. For, it's, it's, oh. it's just commerce and broad stones. Because now, yeah, yeah. Because I mean, that's, that's absolutely how it started. And, uh, but it's... Um, Sorry, can you hear that I'm getting messages on the site? I don't know if that's audible or not. Oh, no, you're good. Okay, cool. I'm not that fluent in Zoom, clearly. Um, so, yeah, yeah. So, like, Shopify started as an online, uh, as is a platform for people to set up an online store. But at this point, it's pretty much, if you want to sell something, you want to have an online presence and you're going to be able to sell in, like, brick-and-mortar stores through, like, a point-of-sale type solution. And, and there's much, much more. So... Uh, fun fact, Kylie Jenner, I think she became the youngest billionaire. Yeah, for her lip kit stuff. For her, yeah, exactly. That's powered by Shopify. So mm. all of that, yeah. right? Yeah, that's funny. I was actually reading um, an article about that not too long ago. And that's like one of Shopify's like insane successes because yeah. to, apparently like so many people try to buy the lip kits that it's like the... Uh, just the amount of people accessing the website is like insane whenever there's a new drop. Yeah. Yeah. They're, so they're, so they're, they do a lot of what they call flash sales, right? Which means that it's like, Hey, we're like the next hour, everything goes, you know, like a slightly lower price. You can buy like lip kits or, or, or you know, what have you. There's another, I think online brand called Fashion Nova that does a similar thing that's yeah. really blowing up in the U S. So, um, so these are all powered by Shopify. Shopify has like kind of over the years invested uh, quite a lot in the infrastructure that kind of deals with like, you know, so like how Ellen DeGeneres goes on like at the Oscars and she's like, tries to break the internet. Similarly, I think these flash sales try to break the internet in their own way in terms of like, getting a lot of, you know, checkouts, as they call it, like lots of people buying at the same time. But Shopify has invested a lot of uh, effort and, and engineering uh, effort, I guess, into making sure that it doesn't break, so to speak, right. when a lot of people try to use it. And I think that's kind of the fundamental problem with commerce, right, to make it reliable, because otherwise people lose trust and all of that. So yeah, I've definitely uh, not so much necessarily with like, makeup or stuff but i've definitely you know had issues where you're like trying to buy concert tickets or something right when they yeah. were yeah and then you were like did it go through did it not and then for an hour there's just this like insane anxiety which is really stupid because you're yeah. like i want to do is just buy this thing and then yeah yeah right and, it's like and, and there's bots as well right so i mean absolutely mm -hmm. as you mentioned like concert tickets that's another crazy example of like that thing which i'm i'm also very familiar with right there's like a artist that you really want to see and most of the people with such things right when there's like few tickets and a lot of people the the weird thing is that most of the people who are going to use your thing are going to be upset because they're not going to get it just by the sheer number how the numbers work right so you kind right. of want to develop an experience that like doesn't break first of all when a lot of people try to use it but then only a few people are going to get it and ideally it's not bots so that it's not it's like it feels fair Otherwise, if like a whole bunch of like, you know, internet scripting thing, like just like buys tickets and just tries to sell it later, nobody likes that. It just feels unfair. And then, and then the people who don't get tickets in the fair way, they need to not get totally pissed off because it's like, hey, so it's just like, it's a, it's a, it's an interesting problem space. Right. And so, yeah. Right. And I imagine, you know, it's like Shopify is always trying to stay ahead of the bots and then, you know, the people yeah. find the bots write better scripts. So it's like, yeah, weird sort of like, absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. So, um, 
as a software developer at Shopify, do you specialize in sort of a specific, you know, part of their offerings that you're building and testing and deploying? Oh, yeah, yeah, sure. So the, the team that I closely work with is called the Shopify Capital Team. So I think this, so so the the Kylie and the whatever, the, the fashion was, they're the like really big, uh, let's say, merchants who've kind of I would say grown through the platform, but they're big at this point, right? So the, the capital team kind of focuses on the on the reverse, like the really small entrepreneurs who are trying to, you know, trying to put together, like they're kind of trying to work on like their entrepreneurial gig on the side. And so capital makes so that uh, if you have a Shopify store and it's been kind of, we assess how well it's doing and how well its future is going to be in the next year or so. And so capital offers money, like just cash, cash advances or loans. Uh, to merchants who are running these stores. So it's just like, I mean, when you're a small merchant, when you're a small business owner, right? You're The biggest thing that you're worried about all the time is cash flow. And so, so cap, yeah. So the system within Shopify that, uh, that moves this money around, that like, you know, uh, makes it so that the underwriting happens automatically for all these merchants and, and, and internal tooling around making sure that um, you know, there's this always these like kind of off cases where like, you know, somebody's uh, returning the money and like somebody's not quite meeting their payments and all of that. So just we have like internal tools around managing that and having little soft touches with the, the people who, ha- who are being helped with these, uh, with these capital advances. So there's, um, there's a whole bunch of tooling and a team around, around this uh, at, at Shopify, which, which, uh, which I've been on since I want to say two years, maybe more, nice. something like that. Yeah. <laughs> Yeah, so you, I would imagine you've seen it grow a lot during that time. Oh yeah, yeah, and there's a lot of there's a lot of stores that like you know initially got like a small amount of money, let's say you know five thousand, ten thousand, and then they kind of use that money to just grow and scale up their operation. And over time, they become like these bigger and bigger and bigger merchants, and like they become they become eligible for more and more money too. So you go from like you know like four to five digits to just straight up like six digit amounts that they're. Uh, that they're eligible to get and some of them take it some of them you know like it, it's just once you become big you have different kind of issues but but it's really rewarding to see that kind of growth where you see people's like lives changing right like over, yeah. over the months you see them like oh there's just like a like a small entrepreneur trying to figure stuff out to like oh this is a scaled up business now they have like staff they have like supply chain all over the world and like you know they're just like just complexity is, is increasing a lot so so yeah it's, it's kind of cool yeah that's really neat. cool to kind of yeah. get that reward of, of being able to to see uh you know successes happen right yeah Instead of just yeah focusing like on one portion of the you know kind of chain and then you know yeah them on that's really yeah cool. yeah um, and so i mean like uh i think there's this like the base that i think got got like I, I mean, like I think that's how I, we probably ended up chatting was like the expenses base, which I ended up making right on on, on uh, Airtable Universe. And I mean, that that was kind of my motivation. Like ever since I started working on this capital team, I became a little bit more self conscious about how I, uh, I guess, self aware about how I dealt with money in my personal life. And I mm-hmm. guess I was just like not very good with money. I don't think I still am, but I it, like this base was kind of like a way for me to get better in a way like. Right especially when you're sharing expenses with like, so, I mean, I'm, I'm married now, but when I started this base, I was like living with my girlfriend at the time. And like, when you, when you start sharing like kind of expenses and stuff, it just, when you make shitty decisions financially, it's like, okay, whatever. You just forget it. Like you just, like, you know, it's like, whatever I did that. It's fine. Yeah, it and then when you start sharing it, you're like, wow, I'm an idiot. And now my girlfriend knows that I'm a complete idiot. And it's like, Hmm. So I just wanted to kind of build a thing that like, I was also getting like through work, I was getting more like self-conscious about, oh, like look, people are like kind of, you know, improving their cash flow scenario. And what am I doing? You know, like one of those like existential like question mark moments where it's like, I should do something. And so, so that was right, kind yeah, of it's like, what does it mean? You're like, I, I don't really know what it means to be good with money, but right. I, I am not good with money. Yeah. So. Cause I don't know when like I made all this, like made all these expenses and stuff. So I'm like, you know, buying things like not, you know, it's just, yeah, it was, um, and my girlfriend on the flip side, she's really, really like, she's like just straight up. Like she, she's really good with money in terms of, well, at least keeping track of like how much, you know, how much she's spending and like kind of sticking to budget, I guess. And I'm not, I'm just like, Hey man, if it's like the cards being accepted, like whatever, right. Right. <laughs> whatever money comes, money goes like some hippie philosophy. It doesn't matter. Um, 
And so, and I, I, had, I had tried, like, me and my girlfriend, we had, like, made, done many iterations of, uh, like, trying to keep track of uh, money. Mostly, I think it's her trying to rein me in. It's just like, dude, you need to, like, I mean, you can't just... Like, do sit plan. down with me and let's go through this. Right, exactly. And so, um, so this is, yeah, we tried a bunch of different things. And, I mean, I, uh, I kind of eventually settled on this thing that I'm happy to talk about at, le- uh, at a later point. But, yeah. And, and you had mentioned that... Um you kind of were exposed to Airtable at first because a lot of people at at Shopify use it. So how did you, you know, in kind of the process of discovering Airtable and, you know, any other apps kind of, how did you, you know, get bitten by the Airtable bug? And then how did you decide to kind of start, you know, I'm sure you try so many apps and you're like, well, this is cool, but like, on to the next. What? Yeah, yeah. So like one of these things with like things that look like as well, like as like user interface, like things that have a good user interface are usually, I mean, this, this is a very biased opinion, first of all. So so with that caveat, I think pe- things that have a good user interface are like, they like kind of break down when it comes to useful things, in my opinion. Mm-hmm. And like, that's why you see like, you know, financial analysts still like cranking away at their Excel 2013, because it's like, you're not going to trust money things with like a, a, a beautiful interface. It's just like, it's not going to do all the things that you want it to do. Right. And and some tools are like powerful, but they're like crummy to use and nobody wants to use them. Um, so, I mean, I like Shopify is, is, is definitely people where to kind of, there's a lot of people who like try to use the like newest, coolest thing. Right. So like if it's, there's a new tool, like if there's a to-do list app, want to try a whole bunch of them. If there's right. like a, like a spreadsheet app, if there's a document app, if there's like a, you know, track your, like your personal, uh, what, what's that thing that it was a big deal recently, I guess, not recently anymore, quantified self, where you're like Fitbit and Apple Watch, and this is how long I slept, and these is how many steps I took, and right. like all that kind of, this is a whole community of, I guess, people who are kind of in that, um, in that, like, you know, like trying new things out. Um, so I was kind of exposed to that, and, 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 and me too, I guess, I'm, I'm a little bit of, of that kind of person, but I, I, I'm the kind of person who'd like try something, but like never goes very deep. I just want to be like kind of abreast of different tools. So uh, another place, I guess, what I would kind of lounge around is like the Y Combinator websites and like these kind of like tech news websites. So 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 a couple of sources started resonating at the same time. I guess I found like there's this company that like was getting funded and I was like kind of trying to keep abreast with like tech news and stuff. I, being in Ottawa in Canada, I feel like I'm always out of the loop. So I'm like trying to like find out what's going on in the US, what's going on with tech culture and stuff. So so anyway, the part of me was that part of that part of that was like people within the company who are trying this stuff, uh, like trying to use the Airtable for like, you know, all kinds of funky stuff. Um, there's maybe there's a person you should uh, talk to next if, if you're doing this kind of thing. There's, uh, a colleague called Simon. I can I can give you the contact information. I guess he was really big into into this. So I heard a lot from him and and, and some other folks at, at, within Shopify. And um, so I, I decided to give it a shot. And then again, it was like it looked really cool. And so my bias kicked in. It's like I bet this is useless. Like in terms of like actually doing something like you know sturdy that I can like. And so so I mean I think it was almost like a like I hated the like Google spreadsheet that I had with uh, my girlfriend. And I was like, man, this sucks. And like, but it's like, it's the best we had. And and then yeah, I had to try other things that didn't work too. So like all these things kind of came together. I was like, man, I, I like, I bet this is not going to work. And it, that's how I started making my expense spreadsheet. I was like, either it's not going to do the things I want it to do. And if it is like, if, if I can make it, ha- like if I can make it work, then it'll be so esoteric than only I can understand. And my girlfriend's not a tech person. So I bet that she'll just be like, what is this? Like, you know, like it, it's too complicated or whatever. Like it's too many bells and whistles. doesn't do what, what I need it to do. So I almost kind of started doing this as if, as if like, I bet this is not going to work, <laughs> but this is like the most kind of like annoying, painful aspect of my life right now. So I'm going to use this tool to make this thing that I bet is not going to work. And so that's how I kind of started doing it. And that was like my, like, if this works for this, then maybe I'll like, maybe this thing actually has somewhere it can go. Right. Yeah. And I always feel like it's easiest to kind of uh, explore apps and, and test them. Right. And I, I'm, I'm with you there where like, you know, I'm like, oh, this looks really cool. But then if I kind of want to use it for something that like maybe the app doesn't necessarily have in mind, you know, yeah. that's yeah. when it breaks down. And I'm like, yeah. I don't want to conform to your system. Like, you yeah, conform to mine, please. Exactly. Um, exactly. Yeah. And, and so I think it is sort of this really kind of 
you know, balance where, uh, especially if you do have something specific in mind, like this yeah. budget tracker, it's a lot easier to, to test something and, you know, give it an immediate like thumbs up or thumbs down, just what you yeah. try to build it. Yeah. Um, so I, I guess uh, now would be a really awesome time for you to share your screen and show us what you've created. Sure thing. Let's go. So if I if I screw up, my apologies, but I'm gonna good. try and do this. All right, share. Be on top. So like, this is the okay. There you go. Uh, I have created this a while ago, and I kind of use it all the time. But I might have forgotten some of the things I had in mind while I was doing it. So if I, I'll just go and cover this, and if like I miss something, we can come back to this and. Kind awesome. Of, uh, get into it. Okay, so uh, I think the so this. I mean, I, I don't know. Like, I, I guess people like at this point, I think Airtable is super sophisticated, and I'm assuming a lot of these things. Like, there's a lot of like kind of uh, I guess uh, knowledge about how to use it, like in a way that is like there's a lot of interesting tricks and stuff. I think I created this like about two years ago. I want to say so. I was kind of learning it as. Uh, along the way. And so I'm not, I don't know if it uses all the, like, I guess, like the newest bells and whistles, but right. Yeah. But with that, like a hundred years in app world. So. I know. Right. There's so many new things. Like, I think there's this like new blocks feature that they released that I yeah. was like, really, this is really cool. Like uh, this is something that I wanted to build on top of it using the API. It was kind of, it's pricey. Like I, I couldn't, you know, cause like, it's not like an enterprise, uh, I guess they have enterprise pricing. So, so to speak, but I use it for my personal like use, you know what I mean? Right, so yeah, I like, find it hard to justify. free plan, yeah, for sure. Yeah, yeah, so I mean, I have this, okay, so I can talk about the free plan a, a bit like later. Um, so what do I wanna do? Watch me stumble, this is gonna be fun. <laughs> um, so first thing is, I think, I think, okay, so let's, let's back up a bit. Uh, this is not a this is not a tool to create like a budget and stick to it, so to speak. That that can be kind of done. You, like if you want to like add automation to it and like have a script that scrapes your budget and stuff, um, uh, budget per category or whatever. It's something I tried, but I think it would require something like blocks or something. So mm -hmm. this is mostly to. Um, so I, as I said, like I was bad with money, so I just wanted a way to. Um, just know what I'm spending things on and like forget budget. Like I, this idea for this was like, we could budget later. Let's just find out what exactly it is that we spend money on. Right. And, first step um, is awareness. <laughs> first step is awareness. So this was kind of, uh, this was a, um, this is an excellent exercise in awareness, let's say. And I want to, this is not working out so well. I want to go back and, oh, oops. Uh, so first step is awareness. And so one thing, and I think now at this point, I think even like Google has this kind of thing where like you integrate forms and stuff with it. But this was like, so what we have is like, we have this, uh, so this, this form is kind of like a permalink form that we have on our phones. Um, and so it's like, um, let's say you're at a restaurant and you end up like, you end up uh, buying a meal or whatever, right? So right away, it's it's one of those like save to home screen type things. You know, yeah, you know what I mean? Yeah. Like, so it's it's like an app, and you open it, and it's just this form. So uh, the idea is that you want to take away like as much friction as possible while still keeping it manual. Like, so I mean, I at this point, I have some ideas about how I could kind of make this all automated, but mm -hmm. but but this is it, it's good and bad in its in, in its own way. Like, so this is manual, which means that. I mean, obviously, there's like the downside of putting time in it, but it also makes you more aware of what you're doing. So right, so um, that's sort of a part of it too, is like forcing you to discipline yourself. Like, I need yeah. to own up. You yeah, know, yeah, exactly. It's like, hey, I, I spent five hundred dollars somewhere. I need to like kind of at least own up to like uh, this little form here. Uh, <laughs> you know what I mean? So, so the idea is that. So one thing we noticed was that. Uh, we wanted to know when we spend things and how so and and where and 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 when we spend things and, and where we spend things. Obviously, to like kind of know how much we're spending per month, uh, um, we kind of made some special categories to kind of know like where uh, where we spend things. This is kind of common, right? I think this is like even in the expense tracking like template that comes with it. 
uh, I think the thing that I added that I felt like I couldn't find elsewhere was that, well, like the reality of, of, of things is that we kind of want to also know. Uh, so I wanted to keep track of like what, how I'm, how I'm paying for things. So if I have like three credit cards and a line of credit and whatever, like I'm not saying that I want to spend for lunch using my line of credit, but like there are things, there are expenses that come up uh, that you want to spend using your checking account or like, you know, like all kinds of things happen. Sometimes you want to put a down payment for something, whatever, right? Like you, sometimes you need to kind of reach into purchasing power you, you didn't have. And so I didn't want to just have like a running total of things I'm, I'm spending it on. And so I wanted to be able to say w how I'm spending, uh, uh, w what I'm using to spend things. Uh, and so that's uh, the thing I added. So that's kind of like, hey, if you have a dual income household, right? Like your spouse is paying using whatever and you're paying using whatever. And, and that way you can still have a joint expense spreadsheet as opposed to like, you know, maintaining two or like not knowing how that comes from, like where, where those expenses came from in terms of that way you can also keep track of like, Hey, my credit card bill is high. Why did I like, what have I like, what have I been doing? And so like, you could just like kind of group things by, by the, uh, the thing that you paid with. And that kind of, that way, you know, like, you know, if you've been eating out too much or whatever, which was definitely the case with me, <laughs> uh, which I kind of used to pay. And then notes if there's, you know, if like, I mean, honestly, this was like my way of initially, I, I had this notes feels just because I'd make some embarrassing purchase, like, like I'd buy something dumb that I just, and I knew like, this is a sh something I shared with my girlfriend. So I just wanted to be like, Hey, I use this for this, like, don't judge, whatever. Um, and then report is another way. So, um, so this thing I, I, I thought was really cool, and we can talk about, uh, I guess, once we dive into the actual spreadsheet, we can talk about how, how this actually pans out. But if you want to know, if you want to be able to see, like, what is your net income in and out, and what are your expenses per month, you just kind of tag a report to, mm -hmm. uh, to all the, like, so I also have a thing for, like, income, let's say, but it's not on a form. Like, only the expenses are on this, like, little, cool little form that can show up on the phone. I don't want to make it too cluttered, but the income is something like, so if you want to say like at the beginning of the month, you want to be like, Hey, this is my income. This is how much I made. Uh, you drop that in the income. And so, and you also add a report to it. So let's say you're, you're, let's say you're doing like a gig or something, right? Like you want to see like how much you got paid for that gig and how much you ended up spending on that like gig to make things like, let's say you bought like a mic or something and you're starting a, a podcast. You probably end up making some money. You probably end up spending some money. You can like kind of tag that as report and you don't have to do it separately. You can all like it. So you could have like a monthly report. You can have like a pod by gig. If you do a trip, let's say uh, you're like, I have, so this, this is the kind of example I had in mind, which is like, Hey, we did a weekend trip in Montreal, but like we used a whole bunch of like credit cards and we used like, we stayed and like, we did some like, you know, like, is that part of our regular budget? Like, no, but then we did this thing. And so we just want to know like how much that cost. So just right. tag everything as like Montreal, uh, Montreal trip. And so that would, I guess, if that, like, if that data, like, like kind of offsets your other like monthly report, at least, you know, like by how much or why or whatever. Right. Right. Exactly. So, 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 so things like that is what I kind of wanted to have that I didn't find in the, the regular template for, um, I, I, because I think Airtable had a regular template for expenses and I quickly like it felt like it was something for like a university student not for somebody who had like a household with a joint you know bank account I was like this right. is not yeah. this doesn't scale for me and I wanted something that scaled for me and so as I mentioned I, I was just like hey this, none of this is going to work right so that's kind of how I even started this so so that was the idea so that um make it simple to record because that's one thing I needed because I'm super lazy. I'm still like, uh, like we still, this is still an active thing that we do. Uh, we've done it since Jan like 2017. We've still do it. And I'm like, you know, it's still, I'm always the one that's lagging. My, my wife is like the, at the end of every, like before going to bed, she'll like add her expenses in. And so she'll be like, Hey, you haven't updated your expenses in the last two days. Like, what have you been doing? You know what I mean? So, so it's, it's, it's still a thing that like, even with all this convenience built in, um, I still, it's kind of laggy. So, I mean, that's, kind of the idea so all right so expense logs so this is kind of the overview let's say of like this is everything combined obviously now you can kind of dive in and like do by category right like i mean uh this is i think standard stuff at this point um so sort by like add a filter or whatever so uh, like how many ubers am i taking like, God damn it, I take so many Ubers, right? So like I've added like bus, you know, like this, this is old data, but like, you know, it's, it's, it's still the same thing. Oh, so, okay. 
Uh, I also wanted to kind of, uh, so one of the things that the idea was to have recurring bills as opposed to like one-off bills, right? Mm -hmm. So so this is like just like our basic lifestyle costs, let's say, right? And so that's uh, definitely, like this is, it's all, to an extent, it's the good kind of expenses, which is like, okay, like, you know, you probably negotiated a good deal for all these things, arguably, and then you just, this is what monthly you have to, uh, uh, it, this is a sub that almost gets uh, kind of deducted from your account every every month without you even knowing. You kind of have to kind of go in and look at your credit card statements and and add this in. So it's kind of a pain. Like I like so one way to automate this would be like have a Plaid uh, thing. So like Plaid is a service that you can log in with your bank cred- credentials and then pull your transactions data. Uh, this would require a considerable amount of programming effort. But that way you can kind of have all your transactions. Well, it's also super creepy because they have all your data now. <laughs> but if you're willing to kind of make that Faustian bargain, then you end up with like all your data nicely kind of collected programmatically. And then you can just kind of have a script that uh, at the end of the day, looks at all your transactions for today and then dumps it in this. Right. I've had a half a mind to do it, but I just, the, the effort involved and also the idea of just giving away all my transaction and like bank account information to Plaid felt a little iffy. But that could ideally be automated. So like some of these things can like, you know, I just want to know what the due dates are and how much it's like, how much is roughly collected and what the payment method is, let's say, and, and when did I last pay and stuff. So that way I know my recurring payments are happening. Um, right. And I think you hit on a good point too, where it is, you know, there are a lot of these kind of new, you know, startup banking apps and, mm-hmm. and it is, you know, the, you're like, well, I want to try this out, but is there any way I can try it without having to like connect my account, you know, like right, I really right. to throw that stuff into a yeah. random app before I vet it. So with Airtable yeah. too, you can like play around with it, you know, sell yeah. it to your wife. Uh, yeah. Yeah. You know, yeah. Absolutely. On board before you start like, you know, really storing like this really private data in something that you don't totally trust. Yeah. And like I did that with Mint in the past and, and Mint tried to do a whole bunch of that stuff, like all this like categories and all that. They tried to do it automatically. Some of them, I kind of helped them along, but they were like, they did it automatically and they just did a shit job of it. So they're mm-hmm. like, because I'm in Canada, some of the things that they just didn't realize, like, you know, what's, what's a Fido? Fido is a cell phone provider here, but they'll just, they're just like not kind of categorize it properly. And so like, my job became then to go into Mint and then like like fix all those miscategorized right. expenses. Yeah, or like uh, one thing for me whenever I try apps like that is like mm-hmm. gas station purchases. I'm like, uh-huh. well, actually gas was I just like having a right. craving late at night and I bought right. overpriced ice cream or, right. you know, what was yeah. it? So yeah, yeah, it's like that auto categorizing. Well, it's like every time I make a purchase at this one place that doesn't automatically mean it's just this one category. And then when you right. go back and you look at it like once a month, I have the same problem as you where I'm like, I'm not going to look at this like every day. Yeah. So, so you're like, what was that? I don't yeah. know. I'll just right. throw it in this category, whatever. Right. No, exactly. Yeah, exactly. So this way, I mean, if you're on top of your game, then at the end of the day, before you go to bed, like you do a quick, like, okay, these are the four things I spent money on. And then that way you always know. And you know, like uh, categorizing stuff is a hard problem. A lot of people throwing a lot of millions of dollars to kind of do that thing properly using artificial intelligence and whatnot. This is simple. It's only for myself and my wife. Like, whatever. Mm-hmm. you know what I mean? Like, I will take the like manual cost. So, I mean, like, if you're doing things well, then most of the expenses, like in the broad view, let's say in the main view that I'm here, they're all recurring. But clearly they're not because I'm like, there's some groceries and there's some like, I don't know, going to restaurants and going to more restaurants and, and, and stuff like that. So, um, so that's the idea. Um, again, you don't have to create like, so one thing with Excel is that you kind of have to create multiple tabs for like every month. Right. And then you're like, I don't know, just that, that continuity I, I, I like, because it's like, if sometimes you have to make up expense in the previous month that really applies to the next month for like whatever reason. And so like, I like, I like to have that continuity to be able to be like, Hey, look. And, and so, I mean, obviously that all of this is possible in Excel. Excel is just like now you need to know your formulas really well. So uh, I wanted like a dumb thing that I can do even when I mean it, it has to fall it has to pass that drunk test as well. It's like that yeah. you're having like a night out and like you get like a bill, uh, like hey eighty dollars on cocktails or whatever. It's like you're on your Uber back and you still want to be able to like kind of just punch it in. That was the right. intention at least, and so not have to do like, well you know this is the end of the month so I should add it. And no, it's just you open a form, it goes in the right place. Moving on. 
Mm-hmm. Um, so again, I guess this was like basic filtering done by, uh, I think we talked about this briefly, which was reporting. Yeah, yeah. Um, so I guess payment methods was the next thing where like, well, uh, these are ob- these are like we have like actual like whatever credit cards or like debit cards and all of that here. So, uh, and the due dates are like let's say it's a credit card, then you need to pay its bill on a certain day, right? So, so so that kind of thing. Uh, and so bill payment log, I believe, is what account is paying for whose bill? It's kind of like an internal meta type table. Mm-hmm. But like if you're using your like let's say checking account to pay for like three different credit cards, I kind of wanted to have that as well, right? Uh, because like again, it's it's a thing with joint accounts, right? Like sometimes we are moving money to kind of pay each other's credit card accounts or whatever, like just just that kind of thing. And so I wanted a, a, a way to kind of log those things as well, right? Um, yeah, and so then again, so this was the income, which are the types of income, right? Which is like. Well, I guess this was my, like, let's make it public. So day job, side hustle, whatever, right? So mm-hmm. so these are the kind of, so income logs are, again, their entries here, whereas this is just the income type. And so this right. will be a type over or as an income source here. Mm-hmm. So you're almost just using that kind of linked record field, right, as like a drop down to choose yeah. the income source or yeah. you know, the, the card or account. Yeah. And I, and I didn't want it to, I, I don't know, I think I wanted to have some like meta information as well. So I didn't want it to just be like a pure drop down with like single value drop down field as opposed to like, so this was kind of, I don't know, this is kind of like a, I don't know, this is like an easy way to model this. I thought this made sense to me where like you have yeah. these different types as like your own little tables and and so it takes a little, it's kind of like a, you have a problem, you want to model it out, right? And that's kind of how sure. it ends up yeah. being. And, so- and I think, again, just kind of bringing it back to that awareness aspect, you know, where uh, you can look, you know, at your bank account and see like the amount of money you have in it or the amount of money that's on your credit card, but to really get any meaningful insights on, you know, uh, you know, how much am I making from my side hustles versus mm-hmm. my job or like, wow, you know, like we're spending a lot on, coffee or whatever mm. definitely you need when you say that we actually found out we were spending a lot on coffee and <laughs> massively curbed it it was crazy so, yeah. so then what is uh your and your wife's process like do you you know after you guys put in these transactions daily or semi-daily right she prods yeah. you to to do yeah, it yeah, yeah. falling behind um and then you know once a month do you kind of look at the reports and analyze or kind of what do you do once you've collected everything yeah, so that's a that's a good point. So, I mean, as I said, one of the things that so this is the kind of report field, right? Which is like, we, I mean, by default, we're gonna do monthly reporting so that we know like what what income came in and mm-hmm. what income and what were the total expenses, what the total bills, and then how much net are we, let's say, we're supposed to have, uh, and and so. Um, so, I mean, obviously, like you could have like like your savings account as well over here, right? Which is like, hey, I kind of spent it in this like savings account. And so it's almost like a bill payment. So um, I like, honestly, I think we wanted like just awareness and we still kind of still do. I think our like expenses have changed over time and our spending habits have changed. Um, there are like our, but our life has overall like kind of also changed that maybe I ha- like, maybe this needs more updating. So like one of the things that I really wanted was like an automatic trigger whenever we, let's say hit a certain budget point. Like, let's mm-hmm. say we have uh for this month, we had like a certain, like, you know, like, 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 let's say a report had like, for this by category, you had uh, different amounts. And then like, whenever like a cumulative amount is hit, you get a text message or something. Um, right. It's like, hey, slow down on that coffee. Like, right, right. Uh, exactly. <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. So that would, that would take a bunch of like, I guess, programming effort that I haven't put in uh, the time for. And I don't know how much, like the marginal utility of that felt kind of low. I think at this point, we kind of are like, we're, we're, we're good with being aware and kind of calling it out whenever we see that we're doing something that's kind of far-fetched. So this is, I mean, obviously the, the it doesn't end here, right? Like the real thing is that when we have conversations about how much what we're doing, like financial conversations, let's say this is this serves as the like corpus of data, so to speak, to have that conversation. And that conversation can vary. So let's say we have a goal that we want to, let's say, make a down payment for X, Y, Z. Then we can be like, hey, it looks like looks like we need to curb on this. 
like we need to kind of curb our things because we've clearly done like you know like this type of expense that feels kind of odd and and, and honestly it's not even very science i mean i wish it was like again i i still am not very great with money so it's not like i have like this big science down where it's like i think you know like according to most people this is how much they spend on like this kind of thing and so we should be hitting that goal for us it's almost like this doesn't feel right so it right. goes by feeling it goes like hey we're, we're doing this thing yeah, looking at the numbers this doesn't feel right how do we make it lesser so that it feels right let's say right. that's yeah and that's that's the conversation and if we can have that kind of conversation we at least have that peace of mind as to we know like what feels right and what doesn't and that that's already such a like relief that's all that's already so much better than just like kind of flying in the dark yeah i like how this is sort of you know you're not like oh well i need to automate this so it can do everything and yeah. you know kind of manage for me but it's just really you know uh kind of creating that basis where you and your wife can be on the same page and have that conversation exactly really um, we just want it to be a, a way to, for us to have like a clear conversation and there's the data and then we can talk about it and so this is not the like this is not an automated solution that'll like make sure that like this much is sent to your retirement account and this much is sent to your whatever account it's not that sophisticated because i don't know i don't even know if there's value to doing that i think it's better that i in like i have a good mental model of how i am with money and 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 i can make the next decisions as required I right think. yeah for sure you know because Keep like a little bit of human in the equation yeah and i mean if, if it's like something automated like if i want to like automate my savings i just make that as a recurring thing right and add it over here and so the money goes from this account to this account and that's it Right, I don't need yeah. to like make a whole big deal about it. I think it's just, and it, like, and obviously if you want to like kind of manage an active portfolio, there's like so many better, like more sophisticated tools for right. that kind of thing. I have no way I'm going to build this on, on Airtable. This is like a, make sure our right lifestyle is not off the rails. That's really, that's the goal of this thing. And for sure. If it, and it's kind of achieved that. And I would say, at least personally, we've been using it for like, I think this is our third year running. So. That's awesome. Yeah, that that alone kind of shows the testament of time, right? Yeah. This time where it's really easy to kind of jump ship for other apps that you guys have been using it that long. Yeah, um, absolutely. You know, it just shows that it works for you. Yeah. So we'll definitely um, include a link in the show notes to your Airtable Universe profile so people can check out the space. Cool. Um, and also, we don't really have time to get into any others, but you do have a couple of other uh, bases, I think, on your profile that people Absolutely, can check yeah. out. Um, maybe you could just give us a quick, like, one or two sentence taste of. Yeah, absolutely. So let me. I'm just kind of scrolling back, as you can see. I'm trying to get to the. There you go. Uh, give me one second. I don't know how to get to my. Oh, there you go. So another thing, another point of contention with with me and my with my wife, which is like, um, my wife loves plants. I like to have them in the house, but I don't do anything to keep them alive and left to my own devices, they will die. Um, also, my wife likes varied plants, which means that it's not something as simple as like, well, okay, I'll set a timer and I'll like every, like let's say my wife is away to kind of uh, seeing her friend or she's out of town or she's, um, I think that the reason we we had to do this because she was off to Vipassana for I think like this like silent meditation thing for like ten days, oh, and yeah. yeah, and so so it was like well I I wasn't going then, um, and so it was like hey these plants need to be uh, kept alive, and so they all have different watering schedules, and that's like not great for me who's I, like i don't have that much brain space to kind of know about plant water right no that's so i'm very much like your wife i'm a plant person and all right. like, i kind of just have an intuitive sense of like how right. i want to water things and nothing is synchronized right. uh yeah to to get to instruct my fiance on how to water things it's it's very complex like yeah maybe that seems like it shouldn't be because it's just plants but yeah feel, but it's not so <laughs> so this is the kind of so we have like plants all over the place so first of all i am going to forget that there's there's like 50 plants in the house it's ridiculous and so i'm going to forget that there's like this tiny thing on this tiny windowsill somewhere so what i did was when she was going i took pictures of all the plants in the goddamn house and and i kind of tried to get their name down and sometimes i didn't get their names right so i literally said <laughs> pointy leaves so that's how i would remember it right like hey pointy leaf yeah. plant in that corner all right, what's its watering schedule? Where is it located? So so for me, it's like I just go through this thing when she's away 
And then it's like, oh, that plant there. Okay, that's, that one's in the basement, I think. So I'll go there and then I'll look at the schedule. If it's like, okay, this one doesn't need to, because if you water, overwater a plant that doesn't want to be watered a lot, you'll kill it. And if you underwater a plant that needs to be watered a lot, you'll kill it too. Yeah. And so, yeah. <laughs> yeah, we like, when she went away, like a couple times, we had these like emaciated, sick looking plants. And so it was just not a good thing not a good time for the plants. Right, yeah, so if I, anything like me, I'm like, I'm in, I've am i invested a lot of money in these plants. Like, right, right. You know, money and effort plants, and like, you, you have to repot them and like, they have babies and there's this whole, they have this whole like life, man. And I, I, you leave it to me and I just like completely ignore their, you know, it's disrespectful. So I, so I kind of figured out a way to, and, and so this was actually the, the thing that I posted to Universe back in the day because I thought this was kind of, eclectic in its own way and so yeah, I that's think I might, i'm definitely gonna steal this one i think for uh when i go out of town and my fiance stays yeah and so this way yeah you can just give a link to people if you, if, like let's say you have friends who are taking care of your plant right so that that way you can just be like hey go on these days and like these are the plants and you know you leave some water for them and so you just kind of they just know where to water how long and how much and mm -hmm. that was kind of the idea uh these are the plant cards individually and so, I mean, if you want to be super, I, I don't think we ended up going with the dates, but I mean, if you're going away, you can actually have dates as well. So it's like, Hey, right. what are this one on that day? And, and then, you know, do you want to do it at what time and whatever? And you can kind of specify all of that, give the link to somebody and it, you can make like a publicly access or like a privately accessible link or whatever. Right. And so mm -hmm. you, yeah, you plop it up on the phone and it's just kind of keep watering. Them. And that's like, you know, you don't have to kind of make like extensive notes and it's, it's something that can be reused for other people as well. I love oh, that. <laughs> um, and then you had kind of one, one last base. Do you want to talk about that really quick? Before sure thing. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So this one's, this one's, this will give off, this will give away the kind of nerd I am. So <laughs> uh, no, I love it when Airtable is used for nerdy things. Um, so it's good. Are you aware of Goodreads, Goodreads? Yeah. So I've heard of Goodreads. I don't use it though. Yeah. Goodreads is a way to track. Uh, books mm -hmm. um, that you might be reading. So they have like really fun things. Like you can have a reading challenge and you can have friends on there. And so you can be like, hey, you can write reviews for books. And it becomes kind of, I want to say it becomes like a healthy kind of like, you're, you're in that headspace where like you're with friends that you know, who are all trying to read something. So if there's like a popular book of the year, like, you know, like books like, uh, I don't know. Like, I think there's a lot of people who read like a lot of nonfiction. So it's like that, uh, what's that book that was really popular? The subtle art of not giving a F oh, stock, yeah, yeah. hashtag K, you know, you know, things like that. So like there's people who like read lo lots of books and they have like, like this reading challenge or whatever. And so you can see their reviews and books and stuff. So I have a, I'm pretty avid. I want to say on, on that, on that, on that site, I try to average like 30 books a year or whatever. And so I like write a review at the end of it and all of that. And then nerdy Sai decides to like, well, sometimes I want to read like papers as well, like research papers, let's say. And there is no way to track that. Right. Uh, like there's a couple of sources online where you can like download free research papers. Um, and so like, it'll be like Ar archive, which is this archive.org. And then there'll be some like right, university yeah, websites like, and all of that. that paywall. <laughs> yeah. And then there's paywalls and, and all that stuff. And so I had like a bookmark, right. Of like, just like just random research papers. And then I was like, why did I add this to my like bookmark? I forget why I added something and, and things like that. Anyway, so the idea was to kind of have a central place where I keep track of uh, research papers, like wh where they're located. Uh, if I make any notes, I want to be able to add them here. Mm -hmm. So like this spreadsheet format is kind of shitty for notes. So what I do is I take notes on another, let's say, tool, and then I will just have like a permalink, kind of like a permalink from there in, in right. here. That's what I yeah. do it now. But so I was like, maybe I'll make a, make make notes in the notebook, and so I'll like leave references to what I, what I noted down, subjects, uh, whether I've read it or not, and a reading log. I believe is well. So if there's like any like references that I find, let's say, so I let's say I, uh, I read a paper in one sitting, and then I found a bunch of let's say references at the end of the paper that I kind of want to take notes quickly, add them here. Um, and sometimes those external links have their own attachments and I want to like review them later or right. something. 
I don't want to like open the paper every time, go to the end, then copy the link, move to the browser. Like I just wanted to have like this like simple metadata stored around um, okay. after I read a research paper because a research paper is just like a PDF in a browser, right? Like, or sometimes you print it out if it's like many pages and it's just like so haphazard. Like I found like some of it was in notes, some of it was in bookmarks, uh, some of it is like in Slack conversations, some of it is like... It's not like I read a lot of research papers. It's not like I'm a very scholarly person or anything, but there like there'll be times that I'll read something and it's like super interesting. It'll be fun to right. discuss with. Um, something like, you know, artificial intelligence, or like something scary or something about like right. genetics or neuroscience or whatever. If you're excited enough to take notes on something, like I'll do the same thing where I'm like, I'm into this. I want to remember it. I'm taking mm -hmm. notes. I feel really engaged. And then those notes will be like in some random place where yeah. even if I do come across them again, I'm like, well, this isn't the time that I want to read these or like look at them. Exactly. Yeah, I like how kind of having that, you know, pseudo good reads, right, in one place. Yeah, Especially exactly. And, and the one thing that, like, happened to me a lot was, like, I'll add some papers and then I, like, forget why I added them. Because yeah. like, I came across something that some, like, I'm reading a book and it, like, refers some paper or whatever. And, like, I'll just, like, put it in my bookmarks. And then, the, the, like, some of these research papers have very arcane titles. So it's like, wait a minute, what was I thinking? Why did I add this? What? You know what I mean? And so now there's like a, a place to kind of have that metadata. So if I'm like ever adding a paper, like I'll make sure I add it here. I'll write the notes like, hey, like my friend says this is a good thing to read or like a book says something. So I just kind of have some context when if I'm like trying to read it and I have For some sure. time. Yeah, I love that. A very simple, elegant solution to, to track everything you need. Um, yeah. Well, thank you so much for kind of giving this, I love this little tour of your like, um, you know, personal life, right? <laughs> by Airtable. Um, and then I'm sure your your wife, like it's also kind of cool to see where you're, you're like, yeah, so I onboarded this, you know, for my household, right? So you got pretty much yeah. on board, her plants are happy, you know, your finances are happy, um, all right. of that. Um, and yeah. before we sign off, let people know um, if they want to, you know, contact you. Of course, we'll have your Airtable Universe link, but um, where where else can they go online to find you? That's a good question. I don't have a very well cultivated online presence. Just a little, but there is. I, so there has been a couple of people who've reached out to me from the Universe link. I, I think there's a Twitter bio or something. Like there's a Twitter handle. And I've had a couple of people who have kind of met, become online e-friends with sort of, you know, because it's just like, hey man, personal finance is fucking crazy. Like, <laughs> sorry, pardon my French. But right, yeah, it's like, like feel, it, feel my pain. Cool. Yeah, and it's like, hey, this is something that kind of, you know, kind of captured the reality of the situation because there's a bunch of stuff online and it just, it's always like kind of meant for a certain type of demographic. And it's like, it stops being used within two months. As soon as the first hurdle comes along, it's like, hmm, how do I add this? Nah, screw it. Like, right you're like i'll do it man. later and then you're like it's been a month I'm yeah do it. <laughs> exactly exactly so, cool. so we'll tell um everyone uh can reach out to sai on um airtable universe and chat about you know plant schedules and uh <laughs> finances and all that absolutely um, and anything thanks. else i'm happy to chat about too awesome. so i think there is a twitter thing yeah c-y-p-r-u-s-a-d on twitter which is an alternate spelling of like Sai, it's Sai Prasad, and so I just spell it alternatively on my Twitter handle. Very cool. Yeah. That's that's a little bit about my life. Cool. Well, thank you so much, Sai, for taking the time to chat with us, um, and good luck with um, the rest of the winter up there in Canada. <laughs> thank you. I will need it, and it was a pleasure to chat chat with you. Thanks for getting in touch. It's been an absolute blast, and um, yeah. Till next time. Thanks, Sai.